welcome to the Owen TV Cooking Show. Uh, I'm Tessa, I'm a production manager here at Owen TV. And today I'm going to share a very easy dessert recipe called chocolate eclair cake. Uh, my mom used to make this all the time when we were kids. It's so easy and very tasty and kids love it. So what we're gonna need for recipes ingredients wise, uh, we need two cups of milk, uh, some graham crackers, um, a tub of whipped topping or whipped cream, one packet of instant jello, uh, vanilla. It's important that it's instant because otherwise it won't set. And one to two tubs of chocolate frosting. And then for equipment, we need a medium to large size mixing bowl, a whisk, a plastic spatula. Um, one of these Pyrex measuring cups works best. And then I'm using an eight by eight pan um, for the cake. So the first thing we want to do is we want to prep the jello mixture. So I'm going to take the vanilla instant pudding, put it right in the bowl. Oh my goodness, I should have pre-opened this. This is, there we go. Pour that right in there. Yeah, we actually have a uh, story from the time my mom accidentally bought the cook and serve pudding. She thought it was instant pudding. Got it all prepped and ready to go, put it in the fridge overnight, and then it just was soup. It did not set at all. Um, so to make the pudding, we need two cups of cold milk. I'm gonna just pour some in there. All right. Yep, and you're just gonna pour that right in the bowl. And I'm actually going to rinse out this Pyrex cup. And I'm gonna start to melt the chocolate frosting for the topping. That way it's not piping hot when you go to pour it over top. So some people like to just microwave it in the container. I like to put it in the Pyrex thing. go. I'm starting off with one. Sometimes you need like one and a half of those to cover the cake, but with how small the pan is, one should be okay. I'm going to put it in there for a minute and that should be more than enough to melt it. All right, now I'm going to whisk together the instant pudding with the cold milk. And uh, you're supposed to do this for about two minutes um, and you can feel it thickening up as you do it. It doesn't take long at all. Let's see, I made a um, version. I made a small one of this for to bring in today, so you can see the finished product. And I uh, got to make it with my daughter, and I gave her a little taste of it, and her little eyes just got huge. She's like, oh my gosh, what is this? It was her first time trying pudding and she loved it. All right. All right, just a little longer. It's almost done. And that should be good. Um, it's nice and thick, and we're actually gonna add the Cool Whip into it. 
so that'll make it nice and fluffy. I'm gonna pull the chocolate frosting and just give it a little stir. Yeah, it's nice and, nice and melted, so it'll be nice and easy to pour over top. I'm just gonna set that aside for now. Now, I'm going to add the whipped cream to the pudding. Um, you can, you kind of want it to just lighten up in color. Usually about half of a tub is good. Sometimes if you're making a bigger batch, you want to use the whole thing. I just kind of eyeball it. So I'm going to start out with half and see where we're at. And I'll switch over to my plastic spatula. It's a little easier to fold in than I tried whisking it last night. And the Cool Whip was a little hard still, and it was a little harder than just stirring it with a spatula. So you just want it fully combined. You don't need to mess with it too much. Once it's all the same color, it's good to go. Okay, that actually looks good. Um, so as you can see, it's, uh, it's much lighter in color than just the pudding itself, and it's still fluffy, which is what we want. I'm gonna put this over here. All right, so now it's time to layer. So first we want to start off with a graham cracker bottom that will make sure that it's not too messy when you try to take it out. It's not the easiest thing to cut, but it's very tasty, so it's worth it. So I just line the bottom, try to cover it as completely as you can. Um, sometimes you have to break Depending on the size you have, you have to break them up a little bit. And you don't want them overlapping, but you do want them, you want it completely covered. Okay. Now we got the graham cracker part on, so we're going to start with a, we're going to move on to a layer of the pudding mixture. You just want to put a little bit in there. We'll see how that goes. And just spread it evenly over top the graham crackers. A couple of them are going rogue. Let's see. Start off with a little bit and uh, you might have to add more. You just want to evenly cover each layer. So I'm going to have to add a little more. And usually I can get like two to three layers of the filling in there. It can be, it's different every time. Now we'll move on to another layer of the graham crackers. So my sister recently got diagnosed with celiacs and the good thing about this recipe is you can tweak it just a little bit for most dietary restrictions. Um, so we made this using gluten-free graham crackers and it worked really well. Uh, and the thing about using the gluten-free graham crackers is it, um, the graham crackers hold a little better. So like if you want more texture, you could use gluten-free crackers. And you'll get more of the crummy texture. If you wanted just a more pudding-like texture, then the regular graham crackers are the way to go. I've also read that you can switch out, you can make it dairy-free if you want by using um, almond milk. And that will work as long as it'll work perfect for this. It doesn't work well for other desserts. Might be able to 
get one more of each layer. Let's see what happens. a little bit more over here, completely cover the grams. All right, we'll move on to our last layer. When we do this, we want to try and end with the vanilla topping. And that will make sure that it sets nicely with the chocolate. That's all right. Doesn't have to be super neat. It'll taste just the same, right? All right, we're gonna hope it, we might, ugh, it might be close. I think this pan is slightly bigger. And this one might be a nine by nine. That might be why I don't have quite enough to cover the graham crackers. Um, so you could always just buy uh, another pack of pudding and use the rest of the whipped cream to make a little more. aside. For this next part, just re-stir the melted frosting. And I'm just going to pour it all over top. It should just cover the top completely. You can also make this an even bigger, like you could use a, a 9 by 13 pan and just double the recipe. It's very easy to do. All right. So it's completely covered on the top. Shouldn't really see any pudding. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to um, put this in the refrigerator overnight. And I'll make sure everything sets all nice and that you don't get any soup. Um, so I have a finished one I'll show you. Oh yeah, this was a much smaller pan. So this is what it looks like on the top. You can kind of see the layers, a little bit of chocolate seep down. Um, but there we go, it's a nice and easy recipe. Um, hope you give it a try and I hope that it's tasty. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.